Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being on this call this dreary morning. Um, I want to thank, say thank you to Goodwin House for um, providing this information to us on something that they have developed. So I'm just going to turn it over to Valerie and let her explain everything together with Rita, one of the residents who actually, I think she was the one who actually um, came up with a suggestion. So thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Paula. Um, we are thrilled to be able to really present this program to as many people as we can. We feel so blessed to be part of this program. And I guess when the Washington Post um, came and did an article on one of our celebrations, we started hearing from folks all over the country saying, hey, I'd love to be a part of this program. And so we, um, after, during COVID, we had put together a playbook um, sharing with other organizations things that we had learned and we thought we might as well do the same. Um, we have put together a playbook of the citizenship program um, that we hope everyone will take and use um, and um, implement if it works in, in their uh, organization. Um, and so I will scoot ahead if I can to the second slide. Um, this is really today our agenda. We'll begin by hearing from one of my heroes, Rita Siebenaller, who came up with the idea. We'll talk through a little bit of the logistics of what goes into the program, um, how if you are able to involve volunteers, how it makes for a richer program, whether that be uh, employee volunteers or resident volunteers, and then talk a little bit about um, the celebrations um, that make it so um, meaningful for all of the participants. So I'll first by introducing Rita Siebenaller, who came up with the idea. She and her husband, Don, live here at Goodwin House Bailey's Crossroads, one of our um, um, uh, houses at Goodwin House, and um, I'm so pleased to let Rita share uh, why she came up with this idea and what inspired her. Good morning. Are you able to see me? Yes, you're fine. Okay, because uh, I suddenly have an ad for Zoom and I can't see you. Well, uh, anyway, uh, I'm the child of immigrants from Ireland, and um, I'm aware of how many of you in the uh, group today have ancestors who came from elsewhere seeking a better life. And I was kind of appalled when I heard that the cost for the application for citizenship dramatically rose from $325 to $725. And I knew what a hardship that would present uh, for immigrant families. And here at Goodwin House, we have a beloved staff, a multinational staff, and we feel a very close bond for them. So I, I felt that the um, increase might be defrayed. I think we have a lot of generosity here, not, not only among the residents, but with the staff. And as it turned out that even the board members and some friends of Goodwin House joined us. So after my initial um, request to HR, which was enthusiastically received, Valerie Burke came on board as the new director of the Goodwin House Foundation and she was most enthusiastic. And I think within two weeks, we raised about $40,000. Is that correct, Valerie? Or actually, before I got here, you had raised all of that. <laughs> oh, well, okay. <laughs> and we're off and rolling. It's a wonderful right. program, and it's probably um, one of the most enthusiastically participated in programs by our residents. It really gets that uh, those of us that, as fundraisers know, you know, we want so much to have that culture of philanthropy, the culture of generosity where every gift is celebrated. And, um, and this is one of those programs where everyone feels proud of, of being a part of. And so that's one of the reasons we hope that you will um, be inspired to possibly um, take this on in your organization. Um, so we'll talk about the logistics, um, communications, um, the application process for the employees themselves, and then the fundraising around it. The communication plan really has to be about um, communicating to 
your employees? How do we get it out so that we can let people know that we will pay for the application fees for those who are um, interested in um, receiving US citizenship? And we used a whole bunch of different vehicles. We put posters around the workroom. Um, we put posters around employee uh, lunchroom, staff updates that come out. Um, certainly our website, not only to our current employees, but also to those that we are recruiting. Um, you know that we are in the thick of a workforce crisis um, with uh, the older adults doubling and the shrinking of um, the birth rate. And so it's even more and more, we want as many tools as we can put in our toolkit um, to recruit and retain our very best. Um, so we do talk about this um, and it has become anecdotally was just talking to our chief people officer the other day who said, you know, we're hearing a lot about the citizenship program in our recruitment efforts and we were so pleased to hear that. When, at, at, I will say at first, um, some of our employees were skeptical. Um, can this really be true? Will they help us? Do we have to pay that money back? $725 is a lot. Um, you know, many of our employees work two jobs just to um, take care of their families. And so saving up for that $725 is a lot. Um, they were thrilled to know that, you know, it is a grant. They do not have to pay it back. We also work with our um, senior leadership team to make sure that they um, are letting folks know. Um, as you can imagine, we go into our daily jobs, we do our jobs and, and forget to think about ways that we can really come around our staff and we really want our staff to thrive, you know, and as Rob Liebig, our CEO would say, thrive is about being better five years down the road than you are today. And this is, is one of those things. So we really ask directors to encourage their staff to pursue this. And then we have done uh, for the past three years, an annual celebration. Um, and that's really um, celebrating our donors who make this possible and celebrating our emplo employees who have begun the process or who have actually uh, received US citizenship. Um, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. The application process is really um, pretty easy um, in terms of for the employee, they have to fill out the forms, um, the N-400 forms, so they submit that first page of that application to our human resources office. Our HR team is a wonderful partner in this. They really do all of the logistical work um, and meet with our employees if they have any questions about this. And then um, a check request is made to the foundation. We're the fundraising arm of Goodwin House Incorporated. And the check is either made out to Homeland Security um, to accompany that application going into uh, the application uh, for that employee for U.S. citizenship, or if an employee has paid themselves, if they show a receipt of that, um, of that money that has been sent in, we will reimburse them for that. Um, and so that is how that works. When they receive the check to go into Homeland Security or a reimbursement check, they also get a questionnaire and a letter um, stating how those funds have been uh, received. We have received funds from many different donors. We have one donor in particular who made a significant um, gift and also has um, made a gift in her estate plans in order to support this effort. And so we tell, she was an immigrant herself, um, became a very um, well-known doctor in this um, area. And so we want our employees to know about her journey as an immigrant herself. So we give that letter to them uh, in the hopes that it might inspire them. And we also give them a questionnaire that asks if they would like help um, with test uh, the, the naturalization test, um, if they would like prep for that, if they would like any help with English, la English language practice or anything along the journey. And I will tell you that um, many of our employees who've gone through the process um, help their peers. And then we also have um, our unsung heroes, the residents themselves, who also give their heart and soul to help um, support them, whether that's tutoring or just saying, hey, we're thinking about you. It is amazing to hear about the many employees who say, you know, I'm going to get my test tomorrow. I'm going to do my test tomorrow. And all of the residents know about it. Um, you know, they tell tell me so-and-so is getting their, their oath tomorrow. They are as up to date um, as we are. Um, Rita, I don't know if you would want to say anything about that. 
Well, um, we feel that we're part of that, that journey. What we have found is that some employees really would like some tutoring uh, in American civics to prepare them for the test, but that requires more of their precious free time. So many of them have found very good online resources where they can study at home at any time of the day or night I hear some are studying at midnight or one o'clock in the morning uh, because that's their only quiet time in their crowded apartments. So whatever path they take, we're just happy that they're moving along and that we're part of that journey. Um, so in terms of the fundraising, um, we did start out with a small fund. It was called um, Friends and Family um, that helped um, help support this citizenship effort. The foundation then trans transitioned this fund within an overall staff support fund. And it's part of our annual fund. The staff support fund covers three areas, tuition support, um, citizenship application fees, and also emergency uh, financial grants. And those were really helpful during the COVID um, time. And so, uh, and now, um, so we really have incorporated the citizenship fee portion of our staff support in an overall staff support fund. It has been wonderful um, to inspire and compel donors to support um, our effort. Um, and I think one way that we've been able to really um, showcase this is to show that it is a differentiator for our organization and can be um, for, for yours as well. Um, the stories are absolutely amazing. And I think for a donor to feel a part of something that is so transformational in someone's life, I'll just share a few quick stories. Um, one person shared, you know, I, I came to America. My first job was in the kitchen at Goodwin House. I came because of education. I left my family back home. In my home in Ghana, there was only one computer for 400 students. And here I can go to Northern Virginia Community College and I have my own computer. And in fact, Goodwin House helps pay for that. Um, there, are, there was another person who, um, after they received their citizenship, um, I felt um, actually selfish because I had so much joy in my own life about getting a text from her the first day she had voted and she said, I voted for the very first time and it felt so great. And she said, and by the way, I went with another colleague who had just also received a citizenship grant and the joy that they had and the joy that I had in learning that they were able to express their, their voice as an American um, was wonderful. Um, one person from the Philippines shared that um, she's so excited that she can now say, my fellow Americans. Um, and one of the things that she loved was that she said, I can't wait to bring my family to see where I work. She was so proud of Goodwin House and all that it has done. Um, and then I would say one other person um, was from Yemen and at one of our celebrations, um, in fact, we're going to present this effort at a conference um, in, in April with the American Agency on Aging later on in, in April and she's coming with us. Um, she shared and had us all in tears that she had not seen her mother in many, many years and that now that she's a US citizen, she will be able to go back and visit her mother and she has. And so that story of being able to share that and she and her husband coming to America for the educational opportunities and being able to raise her children where they could receive their education is just so um, enriching to all of us. Um, so that's the fundraising aspect of it. The stories um, are just um, wonderful. And then I would say volunteering, Rita shared a little bit about um, the volunteering, you know, it is tough to get in um, what is already a very packed life for so many of our employees. Um, but our residents who have done uh, the bulk of the volunteering have been great. They have been promoters. Um, you know, themselves, um, talking to people in a regular conversation at 
at the dinner table. Um, you know, if, if someone, if the server says they're here new in the United States, always a, a resident will say, well, do you know about our citizenship program? And that will spark another conversation. Um, and so um, they've actually come up with wonderful ideas about training folks in terms of um, the training materials. Um, they've suggested books that we use. Um, and we also have wonderful materials that we've received um, from some of our employees, um, YouTube and all kinds of online um, sources that Rita has spoken of. And they're always coming up with new ideas. Um, certainly our volunteer program was highlighted in that Washington Post article and a, a video that Voice of America did. Um, and we're, we're very proud of, of that as well. Um, in terms of celebrating this program, oh my goodness, we've had three celebrations um, and they've kind of morphed. We've, we've changed and hopefully taking it to a new level each year. Um, the first time that we did it, it, we invited every, actually every year we invite any recipient who has ever been a part of it and their families. We always have usually an American flag cake that everyone partakes of um, and people share the recipient and share their gratitude um, for those in the room um, and um, share their journeys to America. Um, the second year we had uh, speakers, we had two speakers at each house who um, made some prepared remarks, but as you can imagine, it's very intimidating to speak in front of 200 people. And so the, um, they did a great job. I was, we were all impressed, um, but we thought maybe the third year we might try a panel approach and that was wonderful. We had a resident moderator um, who asked the questions of each panelist. We also had Rob Liebrich, our CEO, speak about the importance of this effort in terms of um, really supporting, honoring, and uplifting um, our employees as part of our mission. We had Rita talk about um, her inspiration for the program and um, also just her ability to connect with our employees is, is just such a love to be a part of. So we always hope to have her. Um, and um, But the panel approach really worked in terms of allowing um, the employees to share um, answers to the questions that they knew um, in advance. And always having family and friends um, be a part of that is just helps us um, it really de develop deeper relationships with, with our employees and be able to see the impact that, that we have on, on their family. Um, we just received a, a heartwarming note in our HR team the other day of someone who came to visit Goodwin House as a child. Her mother worked here um, and um, she said, I can't believe that I've now been here, you know, several, like 10 years herself. Um, so there is that generational approach and loyalty that this program um, and our organization builds that all of us want to have um, that loyalty, the tenure, um, and the really passion um, for working at our organization. So that is it in terms of what I would share. We have a wonderful playbook that has all of our resources, um, but I welcome any um, questions now and Paula, um, happy to take any questions that might have come through the chat. Well, I don't have any in chat, but I'm sure one of the questions people are asking is how can they access the playbook? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we can certainly share the link. There is a blog on our website, on Goodwin House um, website, The Good Life. And uh, if you type in the search bar citizenship, at the end of that blog article, um, you can put in your name and email address to download the playbook. Um, and we can, um, I can also send out the slides to this to you, Paula, if you want to get those out to the attendees that would be good. Um, and um, send you the link to that as well. Good. So are there any questions from people? I'm sure there's got to be, because this is a great, great um, weapon to use against workforce problems. <laughs> it is, it is very helpful, that's for sure. <laughs> Don't be bashful. I know, I can't believe it. Come on. You're making our job easy. <laughs> That's a great question, Kimberly. Uh, we've had um, uh, we've had close to a hundred people participate in the program in the last three years, 
And the cost has been so $725 for each of those folks. Uh, there was a period of time when it went up close to $1,200. It's now back down to $725. Um, so um, that's, that's what we have um, paid so far. Um, very minimal in terms of the celebrations, um, you know, the, the cost of the cake, and that's about it. Um, but in terms of, of that, um, that has been the cost. Um, so even if even if an organization, um, um, you know, says I, I'm going to do the first 10 people, um, if, if they can just raise a certain amount where they can have any folks um, be able to participate in the program, that would be um, helpful. This and retention, uh, retention, um, I can get back to you. I know that our retention is higher than um, as is the national average. Um, and and um, I believe I heard Rob speaking the other day um, that our retention has gone back up to before COVID. So really pleased about that piece as well. Oh, do staff need to stay employed at Goodwin House? That's a great question. Um, so that is not a requirement. And I, I actually, um, I actually, really appreciate that. Rob Liebrich, our CEO, um, was was really um, wonderful about talking that through with me and our HR team. Um, and I, I think of uh, one employee in particular, he uh, started in our dining services area. And he received his dream was to be in the dental field, he wanted to become a dental hygienist. Um, he was from um, Ghana, I believe, and um, he very much wanted to be a dental hygienist. We gave him tuition support and also um, helped him receive his U.S. citizenship. All along, we knew he would leave us eventually. He was actually promoted two or three times at Goodwin House because of his stellar work. And um, when he left Goodwin House, he actually came back to volunteer and to help our CNAs understand the importance of, um, of dental health in, in terms of overall health. Um, and it, it was not a requirement that he stay. We knew that was his dream. And so as Rob likes to say, as we are growing US citizens, we also want to be a good citizen to our community. We want to help people around us um, thrive. We want to help them pursue their dreams. And if that means leaving Goodwin House, but that they will be um, good employees while they are here and we're supporting them, we are okay with that. Um, and so that's, that's the way we, we feel about it here. And so, yes, I think, you know, some certainly some people have left um, Goodwin House who have been part of that program. Um, but I, I, you know, I have not had um, anyone talk negatively about that to me. Um, donors, especially, I've been surprised, you know, I'm, I'm spending, um, I'm making a gift, I'm making an investment in this program. And I've not heard today anyone come to me and say, I'd really wish that they would stay longer. Um, this is not taxable um, to the employee. Um, so the question, how do you determine who is eligible? So as long as someone is six months, has been here six months or more, they are eligible. Um, they, you know, there are certain requirements um, for Homeland Security that they have to go through. They have to be in the U.S. for five years and there are other levels of, of um, requirements. I also say that because we've, the, we've had such great success with this program this year, we've opened it up to any employee who has been here over one year. Um, they are el eligible not only for the benefit themselves, but one immediate family member can also have the fee um, uh, waived as well um, through our grants. Wonderful. Any other questions? All right. 
Uh, I think there's one more. Do residents help with tutoring? Yes, absolutely. A whole resident program. Um, and it's really scheduled between the resident um, and the employee. Um, it is done on a Zoom basis or, you know, meeting um, in an area. Certainly with COVID, Zoom has been um, uh, the way that most have met, but they have also met in environments with masks on and, you know, in one of our study rooms or, or that kind of thing. Um, we have uh, wonderful, right now we have more resident volunteers than um, employees who want. We have very eager residents who want to support um, our employees. Rita, would you add anything to that? Just that in any senior residence community, you do have a lot of retired teachers. And here we actually have a lot of people who've taught English as a foreign language. So they're a ready core, uh, willing and eager to help. Uh, the other aspect, as I mentioned before, is that some employees just don't have the time for it. So they prefer to do it through uh, online courses, which are, are quite good. Whatever path, we're happy. Well, I think this is great because I've got an activity network meeting at the end of the month and I thought, well, this is a wonderful way to get residents involved, tutoring, things like that, if they're not already doing that at their community. So that's a um, great advantage. There's one question, who manages the fundraising applications and tutoring? Certainly the fundraising that's done, we're the fundraising arm, so the foundation manages um, I would say manages the um, the you know storytelling. Um, we we pr uh, promote the citizenship celebrations in coordination with with our HR team. We have a phenomenal HR team that works with any employee who wants to um, you know submit an application for citizenship. Same thing with tuition reimbursement um, or emergency grants. The the HR team is our is our partner throughout all of this. In terms of the resident, um, in terms of the resident volunteering, we have someone who kind of chairs up at one house the the um, volunteer um, mentoring, and so keeps a record of all of the people who want to be volunteers, and um, and then kind of pairs them with any person who wants to be tutored. Hope does that answer your question, Kimberly? Or is there a follow up to that? But the applications do go to HR first, and as you download the playbook, you'll you'll get that they go to HR first, um, you know, and they you know make sure that the person has been there in terms of you know six months or more. They send the request to the foundation, and the we submit the check request to finance, who makes out the check, and then we get the check and the questionnaire um, to the recipient. And then the recipient, if they want to be tutored, we let the volunteer coordinator know. Um, and certainly um, there's a big grassroots effort of other employees who learn that other people are going through the process and they are incredibly supportive. Um, the person who's going with us to New Orleans to talk about the, uh, at the conference to talk about this program, she has been the biggest ambassador um, and you know says, you've got to do this, don't put it off, make sure you start now. She's, she's told everyone she knows about it. <laughs> Anything else? Well, Rita and Valerie, thank you so much. Um, I will get that information also from the blog website and kind of put it in the um, next engage, education and engage <laughs> that I have. I can't think of the newsletter's name, but anyway, but that I appreciate it. Thank you all again for being on and thank you Goodwin House for the wonderful job that you have done in putting this playbook together. We really I mean, I think it's a phenomenal thing for people to, to look at and consider and um, make it a part of their own community. Thank you. Well, thank you too, Paula. We've learned so much from Leading Age. Um, I have learned personally and professionally, of course, we, we depend on you. So thank you so much for everything. Appreciate it. Take care.